What's up, guys? Welcome to the Stats Free Sports channel. Let's get right into it. Hit it, bring you my reaction video to Myron Rose pivot episode. Uh, and straight up, to be honest, this is probably the most important pivot episode so far. One of my favorites, all of my favorites, really, but this is probably the most important, to be honest. And I remember Myron Rose uh, back in 2010. Uh, he was he entered the draft, but the story started really on national headline level around 08, 09, when he was an All American at. Uh, FSU, and um, I know 2010 his 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 year being drafted. I was a freshman in high school, so I definitely remember the story. I was an ESPN junkie, you know, back then. So I remember seeing him. I remember the story. I wish I would listen a lot more then and took more notes on him. But uh, you know, you appreciate things uh, as you get older. I'm a dad now, you know, 26. You know, wife and kids, all that good stuff. So this is some I preached to my kids of him saying things in this video, which I'm gonna touch on as well. Um, this is one of the few. Now, I probably had a handful of videos I've ever written down things for, so I'm gonna try not to sound too robotic. You know, I normally don't write down things, but hopefully I can, you know, go with the flow and sound pretty decent. So let's get right into it. First and foremost, his book that he's promoting, the two percent way, or just two percent way. Uh, go support the book, man. I'm sure it'll be a good read. Amazon, Barnes and Noble, uh, and more places. Basically, everywhere you find books at. Uh, for the most part, you can find it. So go support the book. And, you know, one of the first things that stood out to me watching the entire um, interview was his passion. His passion for football and neurology show. You know, he is a brain surgeon, a neurologist. And, um, you know, hearing his story and being asked good questions by all three guys, RC, Fred, and Channing, the passion show. You know, they kept asking him things of, did you waver here? Did you want to stop here? And he always said no. Ain't no. And being honest, I'm, a, I'm an American, you know, kid. But kids from the islands, they normally, you know, their parents stress. And kids from other cultures as well, you know, Chinese, Asian. When they come to America, they usually, you know, push academics. You know, and as, as American we are come up more spoiled, tablets, free time, fun time, things like, like that. And, you know, other cultures coming to America, as you hear with every story, every great person, man or female, their parents were strict. Academics, 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 forget the fun, forget this. You know, and you hear stories of it being good and bad, but mostly when they're successful and of a different culture or a different country, you know, um, that was because their parents pushed academics. I need to... And I'm also trying to put that into my kids, you know. I do a little bit more fun time than I should, but, you know, I want to incorporate that as well by academics. But I do push that to, to, to the fullest, you know. Um, my kids pay, play sports. But, you know, as he said himself, from the get-go, his parents push academics. If, if you don't do good in school, sports will never come. And I told my kids the same thing. So, you know, just a note there, but his passion always showed, you know, right? And next, as, as I said, just alluded to then, he's, he's, he said you can do both, sports and academics. You don't have to pick. You know, at, at a, a certain point in time, about high school, maybe late middle school, eighth grade, you get to say, hey, you know, as, uh, as uh, Channing Crowder said, as Fred Taylor said, and I can attest to myself, I didn't know what I wanted to go to college for. I know I had to go to go to NFL. You know, that was my biggest goal. That was my biggest dream, and I didn't know anything else what you no know, to, to to do. I knew the GPA was a bare minimum at at, at two point zero. That's all I knew. But you can strive. You can be, be. You can be both. You can be great at both. You you can be a great lineman and great at sports. You can be great here and great at that. You know you don't have to pick one. You know, and it seems like, especially in the black community, you have to pick one. You definitely don't. Grow up trying to be the best at both. And that's why I teach my kids, man. Be best at both, but mainly school. Forget sport. Even if you a bench rider at sports, that's fine. But school is the main thing that will get you there. If academics get you a scholarship, that's fine. But school is the main key. And one of the most impressive things to me, how timing and how life works was about role found the best situation for him at FSU. You know, he said Coach Bowden, the the the, the legendary coach um, that was there before Jimbo Fisher, 
you know, at um, Florida State University, you know, they I, I forgot who asked them a question, but basically in the recruitment stage, you know, people were saying and role let them know from 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 the get go that hey, I want to be a neurosurgeon, help me. You know, he told all the programs that, and he didn't down a program that told him no or didn't believe in him, but he did big up his his, his alma mater, which was uh, FSU head coach Bobby Bowden. And he said at that time it was lined up perfectly. F- FSU had was was wasn't up to par with the academics. So for him to be so serious about what we want to do, FSU could use him for hey, this is a sports athlete, um, and he's gonna be NFL player slash neuro um, slash um, um, neurologist. You know what I'm saying? And perfect timing because as he said himself. Coach Bowden, they said they believed in him. His teammates had believed in him, and the school put him in situations to work with uh, work with neurologists in Florida. Put him, you know, in uh, shadowing certain people in hospitals, and you know, help him get connections where some schools might not have believed him believed him in enough to to do those things. So, shout out to FSU. You know, um, it, it aligned perfectly for him. But I wonder how many schools or how many coaches didn't believe in him to support him academically. That's why I really want him to answer, but he didn't. Kept it no good. You know, and, and, and uh, he kept it PC, just saying in very uh, kind words about Bobby Bowden and the FSU program. So, you know, but that's that's how things work sometimes in life, you know. Um, but FSU was his preferred school. He was an FSU fan, but... In case they didn't work, you know, want to work with them and stuff, you know, I wonder if there's another program out there that wanted to. I'm very curious about that. But, um, so, yeah, it's, it's, you know, and even if they didn't, he still would push through, I believe, you know. Um, you know, even if the program or the school didn't want to help him out, I, I believe he still would have pushed through. The, 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 the determination, the resolve he showed, you know, his passions, I said, I think he still would have worked out and been the same place he's he's uh, he's at now. Um, and one other thing I can't agree on because I I I done this personally that I agree with Myron Roll on saying it's a seamless transition from sports to medicine, and I agree totally. Uh, me personally, I went through that my myself. Uh, I'm not gonna make a long story, but quick story. I didn't know what I want. I didn't know what I want to do come out of high school. Um, so hey, I'm. I remember it was a project for I think my accounting class, and they were saying, hey, you gotta find, you know, find a, uh, uh, find a, a future job you wanna do, and don't do some basic. Tell me the steps you gotta take to get there. Blah blah blah. I'm looking up like I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I want to do. You know, I wanna go to the NFL. That's all I want to do. But that made me look at all these jobs and requirements. I said, hey, nursing. I wanted to be a nurse, so I went to college, you know, and I did my assignment, whatever. But from that point, from that day on, my goal was to be a nurse, was to be a, a was to be was to be a registered nurse, to be a RN. Uh, I didn't become that, but that was my goal heading to college. Um, so yeah, I, and I do agree, you know, and I did be a CNA for for a year, and it was cool, you know. Um, but yeah, I wanted to be in the medical field. It is a seamless transition, a lot of teamwork. As he said in uh, in in his own uh, words, huddles, uh, team planning, and it's a lot of jobs anyway. You know, so not just medical field, but yeah, working in the medical field at the lowest level, being a CNA, there was you know a, a sports atmosphere to it. And as he said himself, um, a big major thing, not even going to the pro level, but just playing sports in general, it will help you. Even if you're not a starter, even if you're a bench player, it doesn't matter. Playing at a sports level in general, or sp- playing at, at playing any sport, excuse me, will prepare you for your future um, career. You know, uh, now I can test that myself as well. My 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 job I've, I've been working, you get tired, you get this, you know, you get OT, you get mandatory overtime. I I work warehousing, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, you get mandatory overtime, you're doing 72 hours a week, 78 hours a week, 76, you know, stuff like that, doing half shifts, uh, doing extra half shifts, doing mandatory full shifts, all that good stuff, you know, but being disciplined, the, 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 the grind, the teamwork, you know, the assisting other guys and girls, you know, stuff like that, that comes from sports, 
and I can attest. I can I can give flashbacks while I'm working. Hey, grind it out, grind it out, grind it out. Keep going, keep going. And you tell yourself, you tell yourself, keep going, keep going. You're tired, you're you're, you're hurt, you're injured, you're bloody, whatever. You know, keep going. And I do. I can attest to that personally. That it definitely does help you out. It definitely does push you. It definitely does give you that innate ability like, hey, it's second nature. Keep going. Don't stop. And, uh, you know, I can attest to that personally. And I do agree with that as well. Another thing, piggybacking off of what I just said prior about the seamless tra- tra- transition from sports to medicine, I did appreciate Ryan Clark's pushback on that question because, as he said, you have wins, you know, in, 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 in football, which is a touchdown and win the game. But the losses in football are very different from the losses in being a, a neuro, uh, being a, a, a neurologist or a doctor or a lawyer. You know, being a neurologist, for example, your losses is, is, is death. You know, it's someone's life will be lost. And I did appreciate RC giving that, that pushback. Great pushback. Great question. And Channing had a great question and great pushback as well. Fred did as well. But this one really stuck out to me from RC. Um, and Myron Rowe did say, hey, the wins are big as well. The losses. He said a couple losses about a young girl, I believe six, seven months year old, passing away from a brain injury. You know, and he said he was upset about it. He still is to this day. Talked to a preacher, a pastor about it, if I'm not mistaken. So, you know. Uh, that is a very good pushback, um, but you know, at different levels. I, I do, I do understand the question, but you know, as you get older, you know, football is just a is just a reference point. But your career, that's when it gets real deal. So I do understand the question. I like the question, but I I do understand there is a difference to me personally. Um, you know, it is a, a another level from just football. You know, I'm not I'm not. I don't know if I'm saying it right, but I do understand, you know, it's a great question, but there is a difference from football, obviously, from football to real life. Not even to be a neurosurgeon, just, you know, just other things as well. So um, other careers, but great question. Another funny question. I forgot who who said this. I believe it was Fred or Channing. I think it was Fred because he referenced Channing took a Fred question. So he can do a Channing. Fred's going to do a Channing question. And it was about Grey, Grey's Anatomy. You know, the, the the legendary long-running show about doctors and them, you know, romantic relationships and things like that in, in inside the office and inside the hospital, things like that. And he did answer it. He didn't know anything about it. He, he uh, kept his mouth shut on that. But, you know, he said they're all too busy. So they do make sense. But I'm pretty sure someone in there, you know, might be doing something behind people's back. But, you know, from what he said, uh, but, no, it just was a funny question. I did like that. It was very funny. Also, I believe it was Channing about the twins comment about having two sets of twins. Um, Myron Monroe has a fresh set of twins, and then he has an older set as well uh, from his wife. So you know, there's a funny comment there. He about he he uh, Myron Monroe stays lingering. That's why he got twins. That was very funny. I did appreciate those two jokes. Um, and also another one, Myron Monroe talking about his draft process. So he took a year and a half off. Um, he graduated, I believe, in 09, but he didn't enter the draft until 2010-2011 season um, because he went to Oxford, you know, for his Rhodes Scholarship. Um, and when he came back, you know, teams were asking, did you quit it? And he, he used uh, um, specifically uh, Raheem Morris at, at the time, the Buccaneers head coach and the whole Bucks organization. They were peppering him with questions. And they did ask him, you know, did you quit on your team? Did your teammates feel like you quit on them? You know, will you come here and quit on us? Blah blah blah, whatever. And he did say Raheem Morris did come after him and say he 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 does respect them and he's a influence to his son. But you no, know, other teams felt the same way. You know, and and other people outside of Raheem Morris on the Bucks team or uh, the Bucks you no know, staff felt he quit on his teams and things of that nature. So it does, you know, and it, it it's been proven in the past as well. Other people, other young men. The one I point out uh, quickly is Josh Rosen, a quarterback who I liked a lot coming out of um, college, out of UCLA. He was up front from day one. I want to parlay this football career to something else. And you no know, teams, and he still went high in the draft. Don't get me wrong, but teams, you no, know, and analysts didn't like that. You know, some didn't like that. And um, you know, and just, and this just confirms that teams do look down on players. Not look down, but look at kind of funny. 
with play, players with aspirations out, outside of football early. You know, not late, like, you no know, Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, Vic, these guys, or other guys, no, McNabb, whatever. These guys become brands, and then they parlay into something else later on once they're established. But, you know, guys like Josh Rosen, Myron Rowe, and others, you know, they come in from the get-go. Whether this career is 10 years, 20 years, or 3 years, this will be parlayed into something else. That's my goal. You know, saying teams do not like that. That that does turn people off. And um, that does confirm that, which we all knew anyways. If you didn't, now you do know. Um, and one thing to kind of close it out, well, two, two, two things. And I'll uh, switch the order here. His role in CTE research, he does, and uh, Fred asked this question. I do remember it vividly. Fred asked him basically, do you feel like since you play football, you you feel a you feel a uh, a calling to try to solve CTE or help out more than what's been no what the research is at now? He said yes. You know he he is hands on with it. He's working with NFL and other scientists and you know other people uh, that's in that ilk trying to solve it, trying to help make the game safer, help make other sports safer as as well to try to help the issue help ease it help find out about it because right now from what he said you're only able to tell about cte once a person is is passed away on uh in the autopsy you know right now you can't really tell about it if, if they're living you know it's some inklings small inklings i'm not gonna say which because no he 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 knows and he said it better than i did but or i can ever say but uh he did say there's something maybe kind of sort of but not really so but right now you can only tell from the autopsy table you know, um, from, the, from the report. So, you know, he is hands-on trying to make things safer and do more research about only CTE, especially since he played the game of football. You know, and they did have some, some, good, some good questions, asked him about that uh, from all the guys about, you know, like I said, about, about wavering and do you regret playing or not regret, you know, doing certain drills, doing certain things that could have ended your neurologist's um, career. And he did answer to those, so I did appreciate that. And the last thing, my big takeaway from 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 this, kids of all ages, all races, you can do this. You can be place. Uh, you can be whatever you want in your career, lawyer, doctor, whatever, and still play sports. But the main thing is to prioritize. Prioritize or your priorities. You know. Have your priorities written out, have a list, have a note, whatever you need. Know your priorities and time management. That's my biggest thing in my notes, in all caps, prioritize slash time management. Know your priorities and time management are the biggest keys to me personally. And that's with anything, not just with trying to balance sports and whatever, but in real life as well, you know. As adults, your goals might change because you didn't meet the other goal or whatever happened. You did reach it and have new goals, whatever, you know, but you have new goals now as an adult, as a kid, whatever. You can still reach those goals. Prioritize and time management. That's the biggest thing. And this is the, this is the highest level of it. You know what I'm saying? A guy who was a high level athlete all the way from high school, who was a number one prospect in high school, which he said himself, number one prospect in high school. And all the way to being all American in college to graduating early in two or two and a half years. I forgot exactly what he said. I, I believe it was two and a half years. Graduated early to going to Oxford, still playing the NFL for a couple of years, and then going to be a neuro, uh, going to be a, a, a neurologist. Bro, that's <laughs> that's the most that's that's this prioritizing and time management at the highest level possible. You can't beat that. You know, you can't beat that, honestly. So a uh, great interview, probably like I said earlier, the best pivot episode, uh, best pivot interview so far. I appreciate it. I loved it. Um, took away some good notes from it. I will get that book. Um, if I don't forget, <laughs> I will get that book hopefully. So uh, well, that's it for video, guys. Like, share, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.